Well, hello and welcome to our at the table service for Sunday, November the 6th. Uh, we've pre recorded this service due to me being out of town and some other folks having other commitments for our leadership team. So we wanted to offer this as an alternative uh, for us to worship today here on the first Sunday of November. So thank you for taking advantage of that. This being the first Sunday, we will celebrate communion today as a part of our service. So I would invite you to have a form of bread and juice with you for our, as we celebrate the sacrament later in the service. And today is also All Saints Day, when we give thanks to God for those saints of our church and those in our lives who have died and entered the church triumphant. So we will celebrate their lives of faith as a part of our service today as well. I would remind you one last thing that next Sunday, November 13th, we will not have our regularly scheduled at the table service at five o'clock. Instead, you are invited to join us for a special event um, at three o'clock in the afternoon next Sunday called Baptized Rage Transformed Grief, a musical conversation, which will be led by Dr. Cheryl Kirk Duggan, who is a retired professor from Shaw University, where we are invited to acknowledge and bring to God those losses, those griefs that we bear, and to recognize that God is there in the midst of them providing healing and wholeness. So I hope you can join us for this special event next Sunday, November 13th at three o'clock. Let's begin our worship now. And I will share with you our call to worship. That is a responsive call to worship from Psalm 78. Please join me. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. We will tell of your glorious deeds, O Lord, and the wonders that you have done. Tell your children and your children's children that they should set their hope in God and not forget your works, O Lord, but keep your commandments. I'm great, grateful to Van Anthony Hall and our musical team, our praise team, for doing some pre recordings as well. Here is our opening song. Thank you. Our scripture today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. May God add a blessing to the reading of God's word this day. Death and dying, it's a topic we would rather not talk about. It makes us depressed, it brings back bad memories. 
and we will find any way to make it more palatable for our emotional tastes. We do it all the time, both in our individual lives and as a society. One such example happened to me and my wife, Debbie, several years ago. We were at the Verizon wireless store getting our new phones. And because Debbie was a hospital employee, she got an employee discount. So she handed her photo ID to the salesperson. And when the salesperson saw that Debbie was a chaplain, she asked her, so how do you give someone bad news? You know, when someone passes away. Debbie said, I tell them that their loved one has died. Really? You tell them just like that? Isn't that hard? Debbie replied, yes but it's better to be clear about it than to be ambiguous. And then she told us the following story. A man came into the emergency room at her hospital by ambulance in very serious condition. The physicians and the nurses worked and worked on him, but they were unable to help him and he died. And the man's wife arrived at the hospital not long after he had died, and she was waiting in a small room when the physician came in to speak with her. Mrs. Smith, the doctor said, we did everything we could do, but I am sorry, we lost him. And the woman, already in a state of shock from everything that was happening, responded, well, find him, find him. We don't talk about death in clear, unambiguous ways as Americans. We believe we're making things easier on people by using phrases like passed away or gone or lost. In fact, in our attempt to speak of death in easier ways, we are likely making it much more difficult. And such phrases inherently speak to our uneasiness about death and dying. It's not so much about what makes death sound easier for other people, it's what makes it sound more palatable for us. When Paul is writing to the church in Thessalonica, he is writing to believers who have real concerns about death and dying. Their context is a bit different than ours today, but they share our modern day concern of what happens after our life here on earth is done. Jennifer McBride describes it like this. Paul's intent in this letter is not to offer a general description of the end times. Rather, this passage deals with a specific concern that is unique to the early church and is absent from the thinking of most Christians today. The Christians in Thessalonica were confident that Christ's second coming would happen immediately in their own lifetime. This was complicated by the fact that some of the faithful had already died, and thus questions arose concerning whether those Christians who died unexpectedly would also share in the glory of the resurrected Jesus at his coming. Paul not only attends to the fate of those who died, but also envisions the encounter between the coming Lord and those who were still alive. Jürgen Moltmann argues that eschatology is first and foremost not about ends, but about beginnings, about the new creation of all things. See, I am making all things new, John of Patmos hears a voice say in Revelation 21. This new creation is grounded and participates in the raising of the crucified Christ. We believe that Jesus died and rose again Paul tells the church in Thessalonica. And so Christians are fundamentally people of hope, people who eagerly await the new thing the resurrected Christ brings. The advent of Christ occurs not only in the birth of the Christ child that we will celebrate in the weeks ahead, and not only in the second coming when Christ returns in glory, but also in the spirit who brings the new into our this worldly life. The coming Christ purposes to do a new thing. The advent of Christ brings the impossible, 
turns a rock into a pool of water, makes a way, a way where there is no way. This is what the coming of Christ means for us who are alive. Whenever we hold a service at someone's death, we call it in the Presbyterian Church a service of witness to the resurrection. In other words, we proclaim we are witnesses to a new beginning in Christ, not an ending which occurs at the time of death. For in our worship of witnessing to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we affirm that God is more powerful than death and is the giver of eternal life. Paul also speaks to this crux of the Christian faith when he writes to the church in Philippi. Jesus was God's incarnate word, and he could have chosen to use his equality with God for his own self-serving purposes. But instead, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. God's only son did what only God could do, love us so unconditionally that instead of saving himself, he chose to save his fallen sinful creatures. As a result, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Through his humility, Jesus served all of humanity. Through his humanity, Jesus fulfilled his divine purpose. Through God's grace, we are promised life eternal through Jesus's life, death, and yes, resurrection. This past week November was November 1st, a day which is significant not just for being the day after Halloween. In the church calendar, it is All Saints Day. A day each year when we remember with thanksgiving those who have died and entered a new creation. For each of us present, we have been touched by death in some way. It may have been a spouse, a parent, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker. It may have been as close as last week or as distant as years ago. No matter the situation, the foundation of our Christian faith is that death is not something to make palatable, but to recognize that even when the end of this earthly life is upon us, we are nevertheless hopeful witnesses of God's grace. For as Paul proclaims to the Thessalonians, since we believe that Jesus died and rose again through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died then we who are alive will meet the Lord and be with the Lord forever. Our call is to live every day in faith, knowing and trusting that nothing in life or in death can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. In response to God's word, I would invite us to declare and state our faith using the words from the 12th chapter of Hebrews that you see uh, presented before you. Let us say together what we believe. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. We come now to a time when we come before God and in thanksgiving and around God's table. And so today I would invite you to have your forms of bread and juice 
And as a part of our prayer today, we will give thanks to God for those saints who have gone before us in the past year here at Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south, from east and west, and will sit at table in God's kingdom. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took a loaf of bread and blessed it and broke it. And that was when their eyes were open and they recognized him. The table that we come to today is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in the feast which he has prepared. May the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. We praise you for saints and martyrs, for the faithful in every age who have followed your son and witnessed to his resurrection. From every race and tongue, from every people and nation, you have gathered them into your kingdom. You have shown them the path of life and filled them with the joy of your presence. How glorious is your heavenly realm where the multitude of your saints rejoice with Christ. Sent to be our Savior, Jesus took our flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. His words are true. His touch brings healing. To all who follow him, he gives abundant life. When evil sought to destroy him, he and he lay in the darkness of death, you raised him from the grave. He is our risen Lord forever. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us, and we celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. By your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. Number us among your saints, O God, and join us with the faithful of every age, that strengthened by their witness and supported by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and may with them receive the unfading crown of glory when we stand before your throne of grace. We remember those saints from our congregation who have now entered the church triumphant. Peggy Smith, Ken Stotts, Les Parnell, and Peggy Stevens. Receive them into your loving embrace and may their service continue to inspire us as your disciples. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you in your table in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took a cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. I would invite us to conclude this time at the Lord's table by joining in prayer and saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us come together and enjoy our closing song shared by Van Anthony. God of Just a reminder that next Sunday we will not have our normal at the table service. We will instead invite you to come and join us at three o'clock on November 13th for our special grief event led by Dr. Cheryl Kirk Duggan. Friends, go from this place in peace, trust, and serve the Lord. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you now and always. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Go with God. May God bless you in this coming week.